this All thing. right. And now we are making our way to tournament etiquette video numero dos in round edition. When you're in round, there are many unspoken rules of debate that you need to follow. Some of them are not fun. Some of them are hard to do, but you can do it. Starting with our first one, tone and attitude. I know I probably sound like your parents and everyone else who is an adult above you, but you have to watch your tone. Let's say your opponent asks you a question and they're like trying to debunk your case. You can't answer back with, yeah, well, actually, according to my card, that will get you marked down on speaker points and could lose you the round. It also shows that you're not confident in your case. In debate, calm confidence speaks louder than rude snootiness. That comes off as insecurity with your case. Being calm and just answering their questions is different. Now, your opponent isn't always going to be exactly friendly. Sometimes you're going to have opponents that will sit there and be awful to you. They'll be so rude. They'll be doing everything that I'm telling you not to do. You have to be the bigger person and you have to make sure that you are following these rules because it makes you look good and that's exactly what we want. That goes with attitude as well. They aren't attacking you personally. Separate yourself from the case. They're attacking your case. That, that's what we're here to do. You have to let that happen. Answer your questions in a calm tone. Answer your questions without attitude. Keep it calm, just answer the question. If I ask you what one plus one is, you aren't gonna yell at me and say two, you're gonna say, the answer to one plus one is two. Moving on, we have whispering. If your opponent is in the middle of giving a speech and they're talking, and this doesn't really go for LD, more so PF, if you have a partner, do not whisper during that person's speech. You'll get marked down, you could get called out for tag teaming, which is exactly what it sounds like. Think, you know, wrestling. Um, but yeah, it's also just very rude. Like if you're trying to do something and you're trying to give a speech and I'm sitting here going, Mikey, their case sucks, use this card. It's not respectful and it helps absolutely no one and you might even get in trouble during round for it. Which brings us to point number three, which is flow. You bring, a piece of paper, you bring a piece of paper into the round. I don't care if you're gonna write a smiley face on it and do nothing with it, you're bringing that piece of paper in the round. For one, it's very disrespectful to not flow during your opponent's speech. It shows that you don't care what they're saying and that you think that you already have the round figured out. You have to flow. And if you're not going to flow, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna draw pictures for the entirety of their speech because it looks respectful and it looks good on you. But please flow. Flowing is so important. Please write down what your opponent is saying. However, when it comes to final speeches, that means you're not gonna have a speech after this person. There's this wonderful life hack, final speech drawings. So your opponent is giving their final speech after a vicious debate round of hardcore debating and they're trying to win over the judge for the last two or three minutes. And you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Literally, I have, there's nothing I can do. If he wins this, he wins this. There is something you can do. Take that flow piece of paper and draw on it. Because that way you're not taking notes about what they're saying because you don't care. It's just the truth, nobody does. Take your paper and draw something on it. I don't care if you draw a giraffe, you can draw Jerry, you can draw Premier Pimp Eagle. You can draw whatever you want. Just look like you're doing something. Don't just sit there and like dead stare at the wall and just don't do that. It looks really bad. Which brings us, speaking of your face, to expressions. You have to keep your face neutral. Don't be like, oh my God. You can't look super excited because it just, it feels wrong. So if you're mad that your opponent is being a jerk to you, you can't look like it's getting to you. Because once again, cool, calm, confidence. That's three. Cool, calm, confidence is how you win the game. So keep your face neutral. If you think of a really good attack on them, awesome, amazing, I'm proud of you, good job. Keep it to yourself. Write it down on the piece of paper. Don't be like, oh, Eureka! Like, you can't do that. It's, it's very frowned upon and just unprofessional. You don't wanna be like the Trump versus Biden thing where they were both like being extremely rude. That is a great example of what not to do actually. Don't do anything that they did. 
Moving on, also kind of in the rude section, this is a major double standard. Men of debate, I'm speaking to you. This is a huge double standard. I'm not trying to be like, oh man, men, yeah, it's all your fault. No, just follow. Mansplaining. Unfortunately, in debate, there are always going to be double standards as with everything. So one of the common things that I've seen in my years of debating is the mansplaining argument. Say you're a boy-girl team or a boy-boy team or a two masculine people team and you're going against two feminine slash female people. If you are not careful with your tone, your attitude, whispering, and your expressions, it can easily be turned into they're mansplaining. They're trying to show that we don't know what we're talking about. And it's really annoying when that happens, but then if you react to that, it also looks bad. So to avoid being called a mansplainer, remember, cool, calm, collective, confidence like a cucumber, and you will be fine. Just try not to be super aggressive. Try not to be super like pushy with like your tone, really keep it neutral, keep it calm. If you're explaining what communism is and you're like, man, why don't they know what communism is? Do not condescendingly be like, my opponent doesn't know what communism is, so I'm gonna explain it real quick. Just be like, my opponent asked what communism was, insert definition of communism. Don't make it a big deal. And that also goes hand in hand with girls. So if you're a two girl team, two feminine people, however that goes for you, you can't use the excuse that a guy is mansplaining to you just because one, you feel like you're losing the debate and or two, because you feel like your attacks haven't been strong enough and they're winning currently. It's extremely immoral of you to do that. And it's also extremely unfair and just like builds up this rep for double men teams that they're mansplaining. A man explaining something to you in a debate because you asked him a question about it isn't him mansplaining, it's him answering your question. Now if he starts going, since my opponent clearly didn't go to third grade and doesn't know how condensation works, that's obviously different. But even still, calling it out as mansplaining, it probably won't get you anywhere. So just avoid the mansplaining, avoid trying to be like, yes, they're horrible people. Moving on to how I've awkwardly been saying feminine team, masculine team, ask for pronouns before you're around. I know, I don't really care what your political beliefs or beliefs on gender are, ask for pronouns. It's a sign of respect, and not only that, but it makes it a lot easier when you're referring to your opponent in round. So it's better to ask for pronouns. Obviously, a great way to not have to do that is to just call your opponent your opponent. However, there's always gonna be those possible slip ups of accidentally calling someone who identifies with he pronouns by the wrong ones, and then it kind of just builds an uncomfortable energy. So to avoid that, the best thing you can do is go to your opponents, ask for both of their pronouns or their one pronoun because LD. Ask for their pronouns, over and done with, go sit down. It's not that big of a deal. You're not gonna get called like a raging liberal for asking for pronouns, I promise. And finally, your final point that I'm going to make is don't look at your opponents during cross X. Do not be sitting here standing. Don't look at them. That, don't look at them. You're not trying to convince them that you're right. You're trying to convince your judge that you're right. Therefore, you wanna be looking at your judge or looking above your judge, looking at the clock above your judge, just in your judge's direction. Because it also shows that you're like closed off more than like open body space, if that makes sense. Body language is very important. So, you know, this shows more confidence. This shows that you're trying to avoid looking at your judge. Don't be nervous. Just let it come out. Don't look at your opponent to not look at your judge. Okay. <laughs>